Hi there, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, and today I'm in my player's dungeon to talk to you about dungeon dressing. And I don't mean just the decorations that you have up in your game area, although maybe I'll do a video on that as well. But for right now, I'm talking about what's in your game and what your players can see and what's on the board for your characters to interact with. And WizKids has a line of dungeon dressings. And what's nice about this is you've got everything you need to make your dungeon fairly terrifying for your players. You have four different treasure chests which with four different types of traps that you can equip them with. And each treasure chest, what's nice is they open and close and you can put these various inserts inside of it depending on the type of trap you have. But you might have a poison needle trap, a scythian blade trap, a magic cloud trap, or a poisonous gas cloud trap. But what's cool is they won't know until they open the chest and then you put the piece in. There's also two statuettes that spew flame. There's some floor spike traps. There's a larger acid pit trap. There's some rune traps. And there's even a couple of smaller bear traps if you want to be that devious. Now also too, an enterprising DM probably should include a mimic in with this. And of course, even if you don't, your players will be terrified because they'll think most likely there is one. And so that is Devilish Devices by WizKids. But wait, that's not all. What else do I got? Well, let me tell you, I've got, by WizKids, I also have Hidden Hazards. Now, with the Hidden Hazards, you get some rolling spheres, you get a scythe blade trap, and it's much bigger and more impressive and intimidating than the treasure chest one. You get some rotating blade traps, falling block trap, you get some saw blade traps that come up through the door, and also two spike trip, I'm sorry, spike pit traps. And so there we go right there. And they're actually fairly large pieces. So you get two of the balls, get two of the rotating pillars with the blades on it, two of the saw blades, one pit, one block, and two sights. So you know, eight, that's ten different traps that you get with this particular dungeon dressing. And now let's check out the next thing that I have on my list from WizKids. This particular dungeon dressing is for something outside of the dungeon. And that's just part of the dungeon dressing line. This is Merchant's Row, and what's nice about Merchant's Row is you have a number of different vendors. You have two vendor stalls, you have a couple of different vendor tables, you have some market stall shelves, tanning rack, you've got, looks like you got some cabbages and uh, some apples, you've got crates, and what's nice is the crates have removable lids so you can put the apples and the cabbages in there, or you can just, uh, cabbages! if you watch a certain avatar show. Cabbages! So anyways, you can put those inside. Uh, it comes with a pig, cow, grain sack, potions merchant, and a weapons merchant. And it's all right here, nice and neat for you. And Merchant's Row is something very nice. It gives your players just a little something to see, and it makes downtime maybe a little bit more exciting. And who knows, maybe they might have an encounter on Merchant's Row. In each of the video close-ups, I've included five different miniatures to kind of give you a sense of scale of the merchant booths, the traps, and treasure chests, and other dangers presented in the dungeon dressings. I've got Eric Crocra, a female human fighter, I've got a flump, a tree cream, and a human wizard, just so you get a sense of scale. These miniatures do not come with any of these sets at all. Now there are two figures that do come with these sets, and the only one, the only set that these figures come in is the marketplace. And in the marketplace you get a female selling potions and you get a male who's selling swords. And also too you get a pig miniature and a cow miniature. Now generally all these miniatures have really good quality to them. I like it. WizKids seems to be pretty consistent at least in the time that I've been looking at all their stuff. Every now and then you get something wonky but generally I think that's one of those products made on a Friday kind of thing. Uh, you know everybody's eagerly working. Quality's quite not there. But anyways Overall, real happy with the quality of all these items. They all stand on their own. They all open and close when they're supposed to. They do what they do. They don't break easily. Uh, the only thing is there's a tanning stand where it's so thin and small, the little legs barely stand up. But as for everything else, it works pretty good. And quite frankly, if uh, you got a little extra paint and you don't mind maybe trying your skill, you could actually enhance some of these miniatures with... Uh, a little bit of painting on your own, but honestly, I really don't think it's necessary. 
Uh, all these WizKids things are just perfect as they are right out of the box, and I think you can't go wrong buying any of them. Okay, and that's it. That's my quick look at WizKids dungeon dressings. We got Merchant's Row, Hidden Hazards, and devilish devices. If you haven't had a chance to go down to your local FLGS and check these miniatures out, go check them out. You might like them. And if you're in the local area, come on down and check out Game Masters Guild. Check out these great miniatures as well as our store. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, telling you to stay safe, play great games, and we'll see you real soon.